show. And I just come from the poets' poets. Yeah. All right, that's the wrong show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Positive Vibes Maybe, the talk show. I'm your main man, Dash. It's Wednesday night. Thank you for tapping in and joining us. About to be joined shortly by my partner in crime. And tonight's topic is who am I? So let me post that up and send out a few invitations. So to anyone who jumps up in the live while I'm doing such, how are you doing? What are the fucking vibes? You know, yeah, I had to come a little bit explicit today, you know. Wasn't expecting to kick off the show, but, you know, Jetty passed it on over to me, and I gladly took the baton, you know. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Uh, so, who am I? Let me get this posted up. So, uh, first off, let me uh, send our warmest. I don't know what the what to consider them as. Like, we're just sending our blessings towards anyone that's in our rank. That's in the Ukraine. I mean, the U. Oh, I'm getting tongue tied. That's in the Ukraine. You know, we send in our blessings, our prayers, hoping that you guys are safe. You know what we're seeing on the news is, it's getting scary. You know, and I'm definitely not trying to get a part of World War Three. So, let's just stay prayed up and pray for better days. You know. And on a brighter note, you know, how about my Sixers in addition to James Harden? You know, y'all know I was going to come on here and talk my shit a little bit. Just a little bit. You know, but we looking good. Tonight, about to play our third game with him. So, in the hard era, we about to go 3-0 and because we playing the Knicks again. About to, about to dump on New York. You know, championship season. Get your cigars and champagne ready because that's what the Sixers are bringing us. And it's going to be a summer parade. Guys, I've already got my leg mapped out of my head for what I'm going to wear to the parade. That's how That's how much I know we're going to the championship. So, you guys can, you know, well, really this is to all the national pundits. You guys can continue throwing a little shade. I see y'all throw, you know, I'm bigging up the, the cats in Brooklyn, you know, specifically 2-5. Uh, Ben Simmons, but you know, my sixes will prosper. You guys will just have to wait and see for yourself. So Candace, the bandit, how are you doing? African butterfly, how are you doing? You guys can, well, you and Jetty can both, uh, send me y'all requests. Cause I see Jetty hopped up in here too. So what's good with you, Jay Sony? Both of y'all can just send me, uh, y'all requests when y'all ready to join in. And we'll start up the conversation then. Uh, Kia, no things. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? You know, what's the vibes, everybody? What is everybody getting into? Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do something this weekend, you know. I'm back outside, so, like, definitely let me know the places to visit in Philadelphia. Like, what's, what's popping in Philadelphia? What's going on this weekend? I'm, I really want to know. I'm back outside, you know, just for the weekend. Just going to, just going to enjoy myself a little bit, but I want to, I want to really enjoy myself. So, you guys know of any hot spots or any places i should go let me know post it up in here hop on you know we could chop it up especially why jetty and african butterfly are well i don't know what they doing you know <laughs> but they just got me out here so i'm just holding it down till they ready to join the live uh kia no things you wave your hands how you doing love how you doing love kang welcome to the building how you doing player you know so uh well, what's going on? Well, first of all, let me shout out T-Shirt Mercenary, official sponsor of PVM, the talk show. I'm wearing one of the T-shirts. You guys can order your T-shirts at any time now. Just hop in PVM DM, you know, give us your size and color, and we'll get it out to you as soon as possible. I thought we were doing... We were not doing today. We were doing... Wait, African Butterfly. We we, we rescheduled that thing? I ain't never know that. That's what we had for today. But, I mean, we could do it next weekend. It's no worries. Yeah, no worries at all. And Kia, no thanks that I'm coming to Philly one of these weekends. I'm making a list of places I want to visit. Ooh. Please do share, us, share with us the list. Because I got a few stops I want to go see as well. 
you know, I got a world tour. I want to pick up on that. COVID kind of stopped earlier. So now that things are open back up, I want to hop back on the road, get on my way, merry go away. What up, Jay? How you living? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. How you grooving? I'm grooving, man. You know what I'm saying? That African butterfly, I apologize. I should have told Dash that we rescheduled. So that's all me. You know what I mean? I know that we had a conversation. The run, mm -hmm. as far as have us all you and who included. So that's all me. I do apologize. John Burgundy, what's going on with your homie? Pretty rules going on with you, love? How's everybody doing up in the chat tonight? Oh, we good. We good. We good. You know, real chilling, real smooth. You know, enjoying the vibes. Pretty rude. How you doing? You know. And like I was saying, well, where was I left up at? Oh, yeah. T-shirt Merchandary, official sponsor of PVL. So, guys, if you want your T-shirts, you know, or a hat like Jay Sony got, you know, or stickers or whatever, you know, hop in the DM, let us know. We'll get it to you. Uh, and that's all I got to say. You know, besides subscribe to the YouTube channel and those that did subscribe to the YouTube channel and send us the pictures that you subscribe to it, we'll have your T-shirts to you shortly. And look out for them. They'll be in the mail eventually, and we'll let you know when. So, Jay, <laughs> you want me to start it off? I mean, talk to me. You the one that brought up the topic, man. Walk us in. Man. What, right. what, what started you? With, what motivated you? What inspired you to talk about it, man? Well, actually, um, it was like a couple things that kind of like came into formation for me to get this topic. But um, the main thing was a, a conversation I had with one of my homegirls. And she was telling, and like, she was telling me a story about things that was going on in her life and like uh where i was asking her about like certain things like she used to do as far as like going out in different ways how she used to enjoy herself she was hitting me with the oh why well, you know i can't do that no more i'm a mom now you know i'm a mom and i was just like oh, okay you know um and it just so happened like um at the end of our conversation because i was just strolling youtube i just stumbled upon like this tony robbins video and for some reason, it just caught my attention. So when I went back to work, I started listening to the video. And he was kind of echoing on labels and how we use labels to define ourselves. And that kind of took me back to my conversation I had with my homegirl about how she was using her label as a mom for, how, for, why, for different reasons as to why she couldn't do certain things anymore. And that started getting to me. And I was just like, damn, you know, that started getting my wheels turning because I started thinking like, well, damn, do I put labels on myself, you know, and hold myself back from certain situations because of my quote unquote label. And, you know, as I started listening to the video even more, it started breaking it down, like how we as individuals start uh, even caring our lives to how we dictate it, it should look like based off of how we envision it as far as like the name we give it. Um, so, for instance, like, let's say he was using, for for example, I'm, I'm all stumbling on my words, but he was using it as an example on a video that really caught my attention. He was like, um, for example, if you're a child and you have a dream of being a firefighter and then you grow up and, like, firefighting is the only way you're, you're really going to find that happiness. So you live your life in the sense of, like, that's what you want to do. So you cater your life around that, not even exposing yourself up to other options because that's what you put your narrow focus on. And I was just like, you know what? There's some truth into that because I was just thinking about times in my own life where I've been, like, so razor focused on, like, this is my title or, like, you know, for instance, like, I'd be like, I'm a chef, so this is how I need to live my life. Or, like, I'm a writer, so this is how I need to live my life as opposed to, like, I'm Dante. This is how I should live my life, you know, accepting anything that comes and, accept, you know. So who's Dante then, if that's the case? Because I, I personally, I'm confused by the whole debacle about it. But if that, oh, that's the that was the big thing. Like, who are you? Like, that was the the meaning question at the end. Like, who are you? Like, and honestly, I don't know if you ever get that answer. Like, that was pretty much my 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 synopsis from watching the video was just like, I don't know. Cause you could be anything like, and you are a whole bunch of things, but what is that one thing that defines you? You know? <laughs> I think a lot of people tripping. <laughs> <I agree. laughs> 
Because first of all, you already pigeonhole yourself by thinking that you're just this one thing. We're multifaceted individuals. We're beings. We're meant to be multifaceted. We're meant to be multidimensional. We're meant to have more things to our calling than just one thing. You're a chef and a writer. That's two things right there. So what do you mean by one thing? I know. But I'm trying to figure out a way to like, I don't know, put a, put a, I guess put a bow on it all. Like as far as like, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it just sat with me a lot. That's why I gave you the video. Cause I wanted you to actually feel and see what I was seeing, you know? And I felt like you would have a, a similar perspective on it than I had, you know? I feel like this, is how I feel like, and don't get me wrong. I'm not coming from perspective. Um, I'm overly aggressive or I feel like I'm on the, um, I'm on the offensive, if you will. You know what I mean? The purpose of this conversation is for understanding it and a certain mutual level of, first of all, respect. Secondly, uh, perspectives, if you will, or at least a forum by which our perspectives may be able to coincide and cohabitate so that things could grow and become fruitful from it. So with all that fly shit, I say this. To take it back to the metaphor that you use as far as like a kid wanting to be a firefighter, right? And that's a narrow focus. If that kid has something that's inside of him or her that makes that kid feel like that kid was supposed to be a firefighter to that kid in that kid's eye and in that kid's mind's eye, why would you want the options of everything else to be a distraction to you? You wouldn't, and you had that narrow focus in on it. But do you close yourself off at that point of when you pigeonhole yourself to that being your sole focus of what you want to attain? Do you close yourself off to those other options that may be better for you, but you haven't really allowed yourself to open up to? i say it like this. I know and it took me a while for me to even get to the place where I could say this. I know myself enough to know what's for me and what's not for me. Because I know what's for me, there's no linear path when it comes to self-knowledge. Knowledge itself is not a linear path. Knowledge itself is a tree by which branches can formulate from. So once you have the path, there's branches that allow you to take segued, paralleled, and nuanced paths that still go to the same place. So I say that to say, I, I just recently crunched numbers from somebody that came to me talking about X, Y, Z. You know what I mean? We just gonna keep business, business. But they came to me for a business proposition and I crunched numbers. Several years ago, I hated math. I hated math. I hated math since I was a kid. My shit has always been English and the arts. I hated math, loved science, but I couldn't get it because science and math is like this. So since I hated math, it didn't matter how much I was fascinated by science, I couldn't get it. But I crunched numbers the other day because of my art. I would never have gotten to the place where I would even fathom crunching numbers based upon my art if I wasn't solely dedicated to what I knew was meant for me regarding me as an artist and how it resonates with me. So I, I don't have the luxury to pigeonhole myself based upon what I think I am. I know who I am and I know what my purpose is and it's beyond me being an artist. And since it's beyond me being an artist, it comes with the responsibilities and the roles for me to do things that I need to do, period. You know what I mean? I don't think there's a man out there that wants to lay his life down for his family and loved ones, but they're willing to. I don't think there's a man out there who loves himself that wants to throw away their life. Let me put it that way. That's the best way to put it. I don't think there's a man out there who loves himself that wants to throw away his life. But because we know that we love and we're selfless enough, we will. You feel what I'm saying? 
So for me, it's like, man, look, if I know that this is what I want to do, I'm going to make it happen, period. Even if it takes me doing shit that I wouldn't like doing, I'm going to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? It ain't pigeonholing for me. In my perspective, it ain't pigeonholing. It's like, all right, if this is what it is, how many walls are you willing to break down for it? How many scars? How much are you willing to bleed for it? How much are you willing to transform because of it? Because this is who you are. And as you progress through this, as you take this path, you learn more and more the transformations necessary for you to attain mastery in it. And once you do, you become less like who you were when you first started the journey. You become a whole different monster. Because you had to take these other things and these undergoings. You had to transform. You had to go through the seasons. It's those people that don't want to go and they just want to stay in their box that don't end up evolving. And then they end up miserable and start talking this shit about... I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not even going to, you know what I mean? I'm like Dr. Umar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I feel where you're coming from. And I'm not debating that. I'm just more so talking from the perspective. Like, well, we're talking about you're, you now. And, and that's where you're giving me the you now. But I'm talking about before you got to this place, before you knew, before you were certain, when you were still developing, when you were first figuring it out, like, it's easy. That's where I'm coming from, the perspective. That's where I was starting from. Like, how do you know from there? Like, like when, when you're on your purpose and you know what it is, it's easy to, like, lock in and be like, okay, I want to push or I'm going to fight for what I want. But, like, when you're still trying to figure that out, like, that's where I'm, like, trying to have the conversation from. Like, I'll put it like this. I'll put it like this. When you're figuring out, there's things that happen. There's things that happen that, that, that show you that you're resonating on the right frequency. That's the best way for me to put it. For example, for me, my two greatest strengths have always been art and music. I know for a fact because ever since I remember I, I went for like contest in elementary school, like a, a school-wide contest. Right? There was like the best person, person who draws the best comic that is going to win Philly tickets. I don't know shit about baseball. I never went. I put in myself for the contest. I won. That built my confidence. And that also let me know that where I'm doing, this is for me. You know what I mean? I have plaques regarding me being um, an exceptional artist and an exceptional chorus member since high school. You know what I'm saying? I want to... I'm not even going to say that. That's a little bit um, further down the line. But I'm saying these things because once you're, once you're walking in your frequency, the world has no choice but to acknowledge you. You feel what I'm saying? Because it's, it's less about you and it's more about what you're giving to the world. Because of what you're giving and because you're so well invested in who you are and what you were meant to be, the world has to acknowledge you. The world has to look at you for who you are because you're walking within your purpose. Even if you aren't at a mastery level, it's like if you see a baby, it's like if you see a baby draw a butterfly or something and you'd be like, that baby has an interesting use of colors. That baby going to be something. Or you see a baby just, but the baby can hold a note. Oh, that baby going to be something. It's little things. You know what I'm saying? It's little things. And these things, once the world starts pointing out to you what, or to whoever it is, once the world starts, once the external starts pointing out to the internal, hey, that makes sense. You're walking within your frequency. And all you have to do is just continue to walk within it and continue to be so focused at your polishing, your sharpening yourself. You know what I'm saying? So when you cut, things separate. When you cut, people can eat. Oh, man, I ain't never had bread cut like this before, my nigga. Damn. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope they say better things than that than just the bread. But, I mean, I feel what you're saying because, okay, so, like, that's pretty much where I, wanted to, where I wanted this conversation to go because that was my, well, that was kind of like my way of thinking because um, even with the cooking, I, that, I fell into cooking. Like I always say, I didn't. 
I, I didn't wake up one morning and decide I wanted to be a cook. Like, it chose me more than it, me choosing it. Like, I was, like, a college dropout. So, like, that was, like, the only job available for me. And it just so happened, like, the first day on the job, like, I was accidentally working with the head chef because two people had called out that was supposed to train me. So the head chef took me under his wing, and he had a huge order that he really couldn't train me in, so he just had me doing prep, and I was doing the prep so good just based off him showing me one time, he just kept throwing shit at me, and I just kept picking it up. like. And then he was just like, I'm I'm hiring you. He was just like, at that point, he was just like, I'm taking you under my wing. He was just like, I can do something with you. like. And now I just remember him just slowly kind of like pouring into me and, like, even the relationship I had at the time, I would end up cooking for her because she worked overnight. So, like, I would come home at the cooking, cook for her. Then, like, that's kind of how I got my start into it all. Like, but it wasn't me just waking up being like, oh, this is something I want to do. It was something that found me. And then, like, eventually I found the love for it. And I was just like, you know what? I like doing it just for my own. I don't necessarily have to do it for anybody else, but for me, like. I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. But I didn't have like this great like anticipation of a moment. It wasn't like God was talking to me and I felt like the angels opened up and it was just like, oh, you're going to be a chef. It was just like, you know, like it just, it, it was just like something that just fell into my lap and I, and I, it just so happened I was good at it too. So like with the compliments came me just wanting to do more and then obviously like, well, when when your when your staff likes you and the customers like you, you're going to move up in companies, you know, like that. <laughs> and word of mouth travels to different places. So, like, obviously, my resume started building up by that. But like, it wasn't like I was like, I wasn't moving and shaking like other people was like trying to chase this dream. Like, it kind of fell into my lap. So it was always something like I always I'm mindful of because I know like it's people like, all right. I'm going to use my cousin, for example, because um, he was the last person that said to me, like, he is someone who really got, like, a passion for food. And he want to cook, but his cooking sucks. Like, anytime he, like, <laughs> it, it does, like, but, like, he a trier, though. He definitely a trier. <laughs> like, like, he'll try some shit, like, <laughs> like but <laughs> he don't, but... Like, he told me, he was just like, look, I love when you make such and such, 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 you know, and he was just like, look, he was just like, you got the gift I wish I had, but, you know, like, and when he said, when he said that to me, it made me just more mindful of be like, you know what, like, it is a gift, you know, and like, whether, like, it was the gift I envisioned for myself or not, it was the gift I was given, so I had to be, you know, precious of it, at least to a certain extent. Yeah. Dig it. And something else, I don't want you to sleep on this too, because you said something real key. You said that when, you know what I mean, when old boy took you under his wing and you was picking everything up, he was like, yo, I could do something with you. And when you were doing what you were doing, the customers was fucking with you. You had a whole head chef fucking with you or whatnot. Hey man, personability is a gift. Let me tell you something. Personability is a gift. That's from learning. Basquiat is considered by many a genius painter, a genius artist. He wasn't personable for shit. He needed Warhol as his personable avatar before he was able to make some shit move. He was the introverted motherfucker that just painted. He wasn't personable. Personability is a gift, bruh. You can separate personability from the actual art and... And that alone could be its own gem and its own element. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, don't don't be, and this is for everybody, myself included, because that's how I talk. When I talk to people, I talk to myself as well through talking to people. Don't be confused and, be, and, and, and use basis of comparison with other people and what they can do as far as their overt talents and shit. There's certain intangibles that are just who we are and just who you are. You know what I mean? They ain't got shit to do with the arts, per se. You know what I'm saying? Personability is a fucking gift. It's a talent. It's something that comes from the heart. To be able to be a person that somebody wants to talk to in a world where people don't feel like talking or they're afraid of talking for fear of being judged, that's heavy, fam. Man. In a world where... 
give a fuck about you enough to smile and say thank you. Where it's so easy to just... <laughs> That's a thing, fam. Yeah. <laughs> it is, Jenny. You made me feel bad just now saying all that, though. Because I really didn't look at it like that until you started speaking on it just now. Um, especially the person ability because like don't grant it, that is a gift. Like that is a gift, and I should be more grateful for it. But it's annoying at times though, like when people just want to have conversations with you, like like being the person who they want to talk to at times is it's a tad bit annoying, like when I got shit to do, or I really just don't feel like being bothered and like somebody having a whole conversation. I done hit you with like four dams, oh wows, and you still rambling at the mouth, like. Like, I mean, like, in that moment, it, 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 it's kind of hard to be like, you know, like, I'm glad for this gift, but I, I am, I, you know what, you, you talking to it, giving me a different perspective on it, like, that I'm going to hold closer to my heart now, you know. Seriously, the spirit, man, that's how you speak. Yeah. Look, man, look, look. And this is where, this is where, this is just me talking. Like, this is where, this is where humility and being humble allows people to shine for real because you could be the top of your class or whatever the fuck you do i personally don't give a fuck if your person is off i don't give a fuck like i don't care how nice you are like yo word on everything with networking in the city me and chef doing our thing or whatnot we done met a lot of talented people a lot of gifted people a lot i'm talking about motherfuckers up there Producers, singers, artists, rappers, songwriters, all types. We done met motherfuckers up there, but because of who they were, niggas is trash, B. Niggas is fucking trash, you know what I mean? I don't care how nice you are. If you ain't got no spirit to resonate with it, your shit is a shell to me. It look real good on the outside, but you ain't got no substance. It's the substance that gives the weight, you know what I'm saying? No, I definitely hear what you're saying, like, and and that's true. Which everything that you're saying is true. Actually, um, that's that's beyond true. Like, if you don't have any substance, you don't have really nothing. Like, for real, for real. Like, what are what are we having? Like, everything is surface level. You can't really build anything. You can't even build a friendship off of that because, like, what makes you friends, or at least for me, part of friendship is sharing my secrets with you. If I can't and some things that I wouldn't share with others that was really making you so more important than the next person that I come across on the street. It's just like, you know, let's keep it 100. We acquaintances at that point, you know, and I'm wrong with that. But like, if we, if I'm giving you that friend title, like it's certain expectations and qualifications you have to meet, you know. And let's and, that yeah, because that's the title what we talking about. Who am I and titles and things of that nature, right? Okay, so I have this thing, and I've always said since I, I I looked it up, because when the whole 440 versus 432 hertz and frequencies was like a big thing, and everybody in the conscious community and the ascended community were like, oh, 432, oh, 440, oh. I was let me do some research on this shit. And there's a video on YouTube that shows the, the, the waves, that shows the wavelengths of 440 hertz and 432 hertz, and it showed a difference simultaneously it shows the difference and it gets to a point where the differences coincide and they become one and then they go back to their respective um, resonances they go back to their respective frequencies because they're different but they get to a point it's like a double helix it's like a D it's like a genetic code joint you know what i'm saying at one point it connects and shit mm -hmm. but it only connects for an instance i only say this to say this right because of who you are, because of whatever your light is, whatever your light is, there are going to be people who can identify you correctly and people who are going to subjectively identify you according to what they want from you. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So a person might look at you and say, peace, king, because they see that kingly energy from you, right? Next motherfucker might see that kingly energy, be intimidated and go, oh, what up, <laughs> What up, big man? <laughs> big man back. What's up with that? You, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely understand. They yeah. both saying the same thing now. Thanks. 
They both saying the same thing. It's now, all in the tone and the energy you're giving, though. But like, it's different how they decide to, you know what I mean? It's different. They both seeing the same thing. Pardon me, not saying the same thing. They're both seeing the same thing. But their their approach, their acknowledgement, how they respect it is different. I feel like that's where people come from as far as like not liking labels and shit like that. Because inherently, there's nothing wrong with a label. How the fuck am I going to be able to identify you, Dante, if your name ain't Dante? You feel me? I'm just going to keep saying, hur, hur, hur. you know what I mean? These it's, it's, it's really how, how the label is given to you and like, and what they're trying to get over, like describe you with that label. Because like, you know how you can, you can have a label and then it, it's just layers to it. Like how they, how they mean in it, like how you just described, like, and it's all in the energy that they're giving it to you at the same time. Most times, like most times, like that energy is from like a, a place in here. Though, like it's it's something wrong right here. Like I'm going through some shit, so I'm like, what am I uh, projecting? I'm project I'm projecting it onto you. Like so, yeah. like shout out. It's to just it's just really a reflection. Like even now, like when I, if if and when I do get into arguments now, like it's more so like if I wasn't really in a place of anger before the argument, I kind of take a step back and I'll be like, all right, well, this is coming from you. Like, so, like, what are you saying to me? And I try to be mindful of the things that are being said to me. And if I don't feel like I'm none of it, like, then I'm like, oh, okay, so this is how you feel about yourself in this moment, you know? And you just, I'm just the person you got to get this shit off on. Like, okay. That's a fact. And that part right there, Dash, that's a certain level of discernment you have that not everybody has, you feel me? Because it's so easy to get, it's so easy to find yourself in a space of anxiety or a space of um, trepidation, apprehension, shit like that, when we don't realize or we don't recognize that certain emotions and certain energies don't belong to us. We feel it because we're meant to feel. But once, we, once we're not able to discern projection, shout out to Pretty Rude, shout out to that African butterfly. I can't see all the comments, y'all, so pardon me. But oh, my bad. not discern all these fucked up ways of us trying to rationalize what's going on within this start to, to take its toll on us, you know what I mean? It ain't got really much to do with us as much as it has to do with this motherfucker coming around saying this, that, and the third, or moving like this, that, and the third. Because of what? Because of my life? He's a dick. <laughs> so Pretty Rude said, if someone pulls me out of my center... I remove myself because I stay neutral without interference. And that African butterfly said, yep, people always like to project. Pretty Rude said, projecting. And then Kia No Thing said, they see you but can't receive you the same. Snap, snaps. And then Mother Body said, you talking today, Jetty. Nah, man. I be tripping sometimes. Don't, don't get me wrong, y'all. When I... I'm shot out for real, for real. That's why I really just be falling back, and I really just keep my thoughts to just my family and myself. Cause I really be <laughs> you sound crazy as shit saying that. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but the projection is real. The projection is real, and that's key. And um, that honestly, that comes from a, a place of that needs healer, you know? Yes, yes. And most times, I, I'm, I'm just going to speak from my experience now. So, in my experience, most times that healing has gone unnoticed until those situations came out. And it was just like, oh, okay. And then when it, even as they were being addressed, it wasn't, the person actually had to sit with that situation, actually had to see shit unfold badly because of the results of their actions but before they would even take action. And it's just like, okay, you know, like you're you're one of the people that got to hit rock bottom. You can't be sad. You've got to hit the bottom before, you know, you start to look around like. Right, right. And um, and this, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stay here and try to be like, yo, there's something wrong with that. Everybody's journey is different. You feel me? Like rock bottom is a blessing because there's only one way up. But also, there's a balance that you have to acknowledge because shit, hurt people hurt people. You know what I mean? A motherfucker, 
a motherfucker will bleed on you because they hurt. And it's just like, my nigga, I just bought this suit. You gonna really just put this blood on me, huh? And then they're gonna get mad at you because they're gonna, they gonna flip it like this. Oh, yeah? Your cloth better than my hurt? Huh? Your cloth better than my pain? Huh? If it was me, I would have took my sleeve off and I would have I would have wrapped up, I would have made a tourniquet. Huh? Nigga? Really? Really? <laughs> Shout out to Pretty Rude. She said people ultimately have to save themselves. That's a fucking fact. And you got to go through the hellfire. Nobody's saying that going through the hellfire is a bad thing. Everybody got to go through it. You got to go through the hellfire to find heaven. Let's keep things all the way funky. But we also have to be accountable. Facts. We have to be accountable. Well, yeah, you got to be accountable for everything. Um, you got to be accountable for actually putting yourself in that position, like, for real, for real, like. And, and we don't even take accountability for that, like. Well, I, I shouldn't say we, because some do, but uh, a lot of us don't. Like, a lot of us actually just, we, we like to pass the buck. You know, like when something happened, it's easier to point the finger than actually accept the blame and culpability for what you did in a situation that led up to that. Um, because like every action is a, is a part of another reaction, you know, like and no one party is is hands free. Like, um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's like the old saying with the story, like, you know, um, it says it's always three sides to a story, you know, my side, your side, and the actual truth. And that part never goes told until, like, you actually had to be there. Because regardless of how I tell my side and you tell your side, both things are true. Like, it's just from our perspectives. Like, and I can't tell you the perspective of the same situation from another person's perspective I don't have mm -hmm. or fully understand. And even if I think I understand, I won't fully 100% understand in that moment, what you were thinking, how you were feeling, why you were reacting the way you reacted. Yeah, that's a fact. I saw this meme today that made me think, and it resonates with my path a lot right now, specifically right now. And, you know what I mean, for the for the most part, you know what I mean, from my path onwards, you know what I mean, how it evolved and such. But it also connects to our last live that, that Chevy joined us, that Kane joined us, you know what I'm saying? What we were talking about as far as real friends is concerned, right? And the meme said something to the degree of, I think it's funny that people are calling it villain season when it's really just us setting up boundaries. Yeah, I've seen that post like four times. <laughs> and it makes me think, because what you just said is real, Dash. How you feel about me and how I move and whatnot, we both talking the same shit. Like, it's the truth. You yeah. know what I, how you feel about how I move? You're right. How I feel about how I move? I'm right. We're both right. However, we've gotten to a place now where, hey, I can't be who I was no more. It don't make sense. So I'll be the bad guy. I can be the bad guy now. I used to have a savior complex. I wanted to be everybody friend. And you know what happens when you be everybody friend or when you, All you do is drain yourself out. Niggas will drain the fuck out. <laughs> because you are so accessible and you are so available to them, they won't think about you as far as, oh, this person got to get their energy together. Oh, this person got to rest. Oh, this person, maybe I should come through for this person and do X, Y, Z. Hell no. You're not and, even a thought. You're yeah. not even a blip. Like, you just <laughs> there. Like, you're there for their convenience. Right, and this is not even to put the evil card on people because this is human nature. Nature, yeah, that's not bad. It's just what it is. Like when you allow yourself to be taken advantage of, you're going to be taken advantage of. Like you can't. It, that's that's part of the accountability we were just talking about. Like that's being accountable for paying yourself in certain situations. Like you gotta be you gotta be your own champion at time. Well, you gotta be your own champion all the time, but you gotta defend yourself and stand up for yourself. Cause like a person don't know when you're at your limit until you let them know, like, yo, I'm at my limit. Like, um, I, that's why I always be so quick to say, like, I'm not a mind reader. Every time I say I have a situation, it's just be like, look, if I, if I don't know what's going on with you and I ask you what's going on with you and you tell me it's nothing, that's, it's nothing. Because yeah. if I assume I'm making myself an asshole because assuming only gonna put me at a 
at a disadvantage because I'm I'm more than likely I'm going to assume wrong. And it's not going to be what you need. And I just probably made the situation worse than it needed to be, you know. Yeah. And you really did. <laughs> like, I'm not a mind reader. Like, at the end of the day, like, I can't give you what you need. I can't be there for you. Like, you can't expect somebody to have your hand or have your back if they can't, if they can't assist you, if you won't allow them to assist you. Like, first, it can only help you as much as you allow them to help you. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. That's a super fact. Omi creates. Once again, I can't see all the comments y'all so part oh, of. Omi, Omi, she said, you no longer your own friend. And then African Butterfly said, takers going to take. It's just what they do. If you don't set boundaries, they will drain you without a thought. Uh, and then we got, what's this? Culture said, yeah, that's why you have to accept others' realities. But you don't have to base your actions based off their perspectives. Uh, Pretty Ruth said, "The heal, self-evaluate. They may even apologize at their reflection. Some mm -hmm. have the inability to self-reflect." And oh yeah, African butterfly got one more. She said, "Healing hurts. It's not all bubble baths and wine. You got to address your trauma to heal it." Right. And these are all facts, guys. So how do you all define, identify your traumas? And when do you notice this, this is a trauma for you? And Jetty, I'm going to ask this question for you too as well, you know. Uh, so you're asking when, when do I identify that there's a trauma? Yeah. How, how, well, what are your keys to identifying the trauma that's going on within you? Or if, well, the last time you ever felt like you was experiencing trauma, you know, and um, that shit today. <laughs> Dude, man, this shit don't disappear. Let me put it to you right now. Look, look. Of course you go to a place where, you know what I mean, these feelings, they are mitigated, they're marginalized. Of course, you know what I mean? Because that's what we're, we're getting for. We don't want to be stoic because we still want to feel, you know what I mean? But at the, at the same time, it's not like you won't feel it. You'll feel it. It's how you respond to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, I have a thing about my name. I was in the I was in the department today. <laughs> I'm petty as fuck. I was in the department today, and I heard somebody on the on the intercom or whatever. It was like, uh, Je "Jedi die." Uh, oh no 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 no! Yeah, I I hate the mispronouncing of names. Like. Look, ten years ago, I would have probably said something real smart to him. I probably would have went up and said something smart, or I would have waited until the end of the day and said something smart. Right? You know what my new thing is? What? I'm gonna keep working. You ain't called my name. <laughs> you ain't called my name. If you called my name, I would have came. <laughs> call my name. <laughs> I'ma keep working. <laughs> oh man. Keep working until you send somebody that know my name to call my name. And then I'll come. You know what I mean? It's simple. It's how you respond. And I feel like from day to day, and that's just one aspect, but I'm just using that as an example, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's my thing with my name, because it's always been something since I was young that followed me. People didn't know how to pronounce my name, you know what I mean? And with the transition of my mom from last year, it's more important now more than ever that people respect my name. At first, I used to even shun my name. I used to feel some type of way because people would be like, Jedi, or whatever. Now, I ain't got nothing for it. Respect my name or don't call me at all. Respect my name or don't call me at all. If you like say Jetty, call me Jay. If you can't call me none of those, we ain't got nothing to talk about. Period. I can do that. Set that boundary and let them know. So, Pretty Root said, shit, anyone else realize a lot of their life was one traumatic event at that never? Anyone? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, African Butterfly said, usually when my reaction is bigger than the moment or the issue. And Pretty Rude, I mean, Kia No Thing said, um, when you're triggered and your body reacts. So, um, with that, so Kia No Things, when you're triggered, that that's I see. I don't want to be triggered every time, and that gets a traumatic reaction out of me. Like, like I want. Well, it's things that trigger me, but I don't 
feel like traumatic over them. Like it, it just triggered me in the moment, and it could go away that moment as well. Like, um, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to get that off. <laughs> I feel you, my nigga. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that butterfly said, and she's responding to pretty rude. She says, "Same. That's when you realize that life is about how you react." Not the things that come to you, because they're gonna keep coming. That's a fucking fact. Like, you're not gonna be able to block out these emotions. They're gonna be unpleasant. They're gonna test you. They're gonna do a lot of shit to push you off your pivot, to 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 influence you or to sway you off your lily pad, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. And take some time to breathe. And that'll be all the difference in the world and how you respond. Because you got to you gotta look at it like this, fam, right? The type of person that is trying to throw this energy at you, they're already in balance within themselves. It ain't going to take much to throw them off their shit. So imagine if you don't do anything. Now they have to deal with the dissonance. Actually, it's a lot of power and stillness, like... <sighs> And not, and not and not doing nothing at all. Like it's a it's a lot of power in it. Um, and not everything deserves your reaction or your energy. And like I mean, some of the stuff, most of well, most of the stuff we all know already. Like just experiencing life, but like it is, uh, you get a certain level of power and control over a situation by doing nothing. Like sometimes the art of just sitting there and just allowing the person to just be in whatever mood they in, like however aggressive or however they projecting themselves off the bay, like you you exhibiting so much more dominance over them because at the while they in my experience, I'ma keep on speaking from my experience with this, like you know, like they start looking around feeling stupid that they the only one screaming and yelling, you know, and you sitting there cooler than a cool cat cooler cooler than a cucumber <laughs> in their face and you know while they're so ah you know and that will you know they start making them really start reflecting on like how stupid they are you know and start reevaluating like yo is this situation really that deep you know like well should I calm down or should we just address this differently because yeah. I'm I'm looking bad in this light you know one of my favorite adages I forgot where the fuck I read this shit. But this shit made... I think it might have been 48 Laws of Power. It might have been 48 Laws of Power. One of my favorite adages is something to the degree of if a fool throws rocks at you and you throw rocks at the fool, the passerbys will never know who's the fool. Yeah. Y'all both in the same fucking... Y'all both... Listen, yeah. Right. That's something that's been preached to me ever since I was doing like grade school. That phrase, like, and that honestly started young, like, being a kid, you know, arguing back and forth, just getting into little classroom tips and stuff, and the teacher was just like, well, how, you know, I, and I was that kid that I always got in trouble, because I was always the kid that would retaliate back, so when I would retaliate back, it would be like, well, damn, you ain't see such and such hit me, or, you know, bother me first, you know, it'd be like, oh, we kind of missed it, you know. And my thing would be like, well, the teacher, she kind of started putting me on game. She was just like, look, she was like, all I see is two kids fighting, you know, like, I don't know who started what. I don't care who started what. All I know is that came in passing, y'all both was interacting. Now, maybe if you stay calm and, you know, he would have gotten in trouble. But in the back of my mind, I'm just like, so basically, you just wanted me to get my ass whooped. <laughs> like, <laughs> Because, like, like, in my head, I was just like, yeah, stay calm and what? Get my ass whooped until you looked over in my direction and then maybe you was going to come say, nah, I'm okay. Like, thing, though, here's the ill thing. Here's the real ill thing, right? Mm -hmm. You're always going to get your ass whooped in life. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Whether you fight the fool, whether you fight mm -hmm. the or you take the larger path and you allow for somebody else to be able to distinguish what's true from what's not, you're always going to get your ass whooped. So how do you want your ass whooped? You want your ass whooped fighting the fool? Or you want your ass whooped by taking the L and having somebody higher than you go, I seen what happened. Either way, you're going to get your ass whooped. Yeah. Nobody going yeah. through life just whooping ass. I guarantee you, I don't give a fuck who you are. No one's going through life just whooping ass. No, the L's, the L's shake you up. The L's make you a better person. I tell, they, 
I took one L my whole life, bro. One joint. Uh-huh. One? I, know, I took a lot more than that, you know. And a one. couple was too close to call. One and the kicker was, it was two rounds. I was a kid. It was two rounds. It was right before I was diagnosed with diabetes. I beat the first round, but I was way too weak to fight more than one round. You know what I'm saying? My body was super fatigued and stuff. Main man slammed me, and it was over. <laughs> it was over for a cowboy, bro. <laughs> he slammed me. That joke, I'm going to just lay here for a little while, man. Get punched on until it's done with. Block, block, a, block as many as I can. But I ain't getting back up right now. I'm too weak. You feel me? I'm going to be for real. I lost one, John. <laughs> it was a bad joint too. He was talking shit afterwards. I had to beat him up again. <laughs> oh God! How y'all feeling today, though, man? Y'all good? But we feeling beautiful, man. We feeling That's beautiful, what's up, man. How you living? I've been, I've been working on some epic work right now. I ain't gonna hold y'all. Like I've been working on this three piece, this three hit combo right now. Mm-hmm. It's an interlude, a poem, and a song. But it's all touching the same topic. Like, this shit is a movie, bro. Um, What's the topic? Uh, it's about it's about some of my fallen folks. Like, predominantly about one of my best friends that was killed when I was 16. Um, Like, the, the interlude in the poem is directly about him. Because the interlude is about, like, dreams that I be having sometimes in which, like, a lot of times in my dreams I be chilling with niggas or... We have a phone call, chopping it up, you know what I'm saying, things to that nature. So, and I wake up the same way every time, like, towards the end of me sleeping, I will start to realize, like, yo, bro's gone, like, I'm tripping. And that wakes me up. Right on. But, uh. I dig on it, I dig on it. So, all right, so, you know, I mean, dreams, they they reveal a lot about us or whatnot. Since the topic is who am I and talking about identity or whatnot, you know, as a means for us to to you know find a, a resolution to the conversation at hand, how do you feel that dream resonated with you as far as who you know yourself to be? It's, I know that it resonated with me that I be missing. I miss my folks. I think about him every day. He died when we was when we was sixteen. That was sixteen years ago. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know that. Because of because of the relationship we had, that was really one of my best friends. And that was the only friend of mine that I didn't get a chance to just be like, yo, bro, I love you, bro. I appreciate you, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're a genuine dude. I value our friendship. I never had a chance to say that to him. So I make sure I, I tell people where we at always. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know I got love for you, bro. You know what I'm saying? The energy we show. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, I, I I tried my hardest to never make that mistake again because I had to eat that joint. You know what I'm saying? I actually talked to his mom today, and I ain't talked to her in some years, but she called me this morning. And, you know, everything, because that's been in my thoughts for a while, for over a year now, just just dwelling on the fact that, damn, like, how can I ever try to reconcile that, that, like, I never got a chance to say it to him. I was fortunate enough to tell all, is, spill as many as feelings as I could while the time allowed it to his mom earlier. You know what I'm saying? And that even gave me some some gems from a side of our relationship that I didn't even know about. You know what I'm saying? Between me and him. You feel me? To hear his 65-year-old mom say, yeah, Terry will always be like, my, that's my nigga. You hear a 65-year-old woman say <laughs> her step home from somebody her nigga, like, somebody his nigga, like, I said, yeah, yeah, I knew that that was love right there. Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah, I'm sure bro knew, but it's just different when you hear it because a lot of times you don't get to hear type of type of things like especially growing up in an urban environment. A lot of guys don't be, you know what I'm saying? A lot of guys don't be showing love. You feel me? Hey, man. A lot of people don't get love. A lot of people don't receive it. And and it's not even about knowing if the person got it or not. I just be like reassuring, like, I don't know if anybody told you today, but I value you. You know what I'm saying? That's how I am now. Yeah. So sometimes you just need to hear it. it. Yeah. Right. Sometimes exactly. you just need the words. I'm going to keep it funky with you gentlemen, right? Because of what you said. And I'm healed enough to be able to speak this because this is something that haunted me for months. When my mom was um, in her last days physically here, she was intubated, right? She had a tube in her throat, so she couldn't talk. Before she was intubated, I had to go off. I don't know if I needed to go work or I just needed to go home because I was tired, whatever the case. 
and my mom was trying to tell me something. And I was just like, Mom, I'll be back tomorrow, da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I love you. And then my mom was like, no, you don't. Those were the last words my mom told me. No, you don't. However, when my mom transitioned and she was intubated, it was eye contact. I saw her give up the ghost. I saw her communicate that she loved me through just eye contact. You feel what I'm saying? So even like now, I'm still healing from that because my mom was a really expressive person. She ain't hold back nothing from no one. She taught and she ain't over taught because she was a wise woman. But if she felt something, she let you know. You know what I'm saying? It put me in a place where I had to be able to look beyond words. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, that's real. But yeah, like our connection, our our friendship was definitely like he was one of the kids that didn't have a lot growing up. You know what I'm saying? But within that, like you saying that connection, I still we still both understood we had love for each other. Like I've been diabetic since I was ten, right? And in high school, like right the same year that bro passed. It would been it was times where my blood sugar would drop and we had two different lunch periods and our school we used to be able to go out for lunch like go to whatever store we wanted to and everything and bro used to he, one of the one of the kids that wasn't of you know what i'm saying a, a, a real wealthy family and things of that nature just a family making it you feel me and he would spend his last to make sure i was cool you feel me as he was a genuine dude and i try to i try to one thing one of my one of my one of my bros told me one of my homies you know that's you know, one of the bros from the, from from experience, not from genetics. Uh, he told me like, bro, like, cause he he deals with the trauma of him losing his uh his younger brother. Well, it was his cousin, but they had a relationship like brothers. And he he died while he was in prison. You know what I'm saying? My my man was in prison, and his his younger brother figure died by a family member. You know what I'm saying? Was killed by a relative. Yeah. So like he had to he had to eat that in jail, you feel me? But he, he does spoken word. He got a, he actually released a book. Y'all should check it out. You can p- purchase it online. Uh uh Chronicles of the Crack House Kids, Dope Mindset. Mm. His name uh Shahid Boom. Mm. Fire. He's definitely fire. Yeah, definitely check, check in with that, John. So let me let me let me let y'all hear this 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 trifecta though. Whoa, whoa, bro, whoa, we gotta we gotta yeah. do it another time, bro. We we rounding off. All right, let me close. I do let that. me close out with the trifecta today. Let me know I, when y'all I, got like. We gotta make a special for that. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm just saying because it's in that it's in that I felt like it was very appropriate to the Who Am I basis. That's why. That's the only reason why I said it. So do me a favor. If that's the case, then I need you to pull a line from that poem so that we can wrap it up as our traditional leave something on the table that resonated. Pull a line from that poem and, and put that joint on the table so that we can round this out proper. And we're going to have an episode in which we're going to showcase you properly, fam. I know. We do need a full episode with you. All right, that's for definitely sure. We, uh, well, I'll reach out to you and uh, we'll get something chopped up and see what we could work out. Let me see. The whole, I'm, I ain't going to lie, bro. You know how I write, bro. You've known me for some time. Every line is a line, bro. I know. So let me just let me just randomly pick one. All right. So let me just do this. It's just a quick little run. I said, I'm tired of the laws being lost with no direction. Because everybody hard with a weapon, never peeping how we're digressing at a rapid progression. In fact, the impact will leave tears on either side of the lesson. Mm. Mm. I mess with it. I mess with it. That's real. That's real. That's real. And to that effect, I can say that my last line, as far as what I'm going to put on the conversation to wrap this up, and my lasting thought would be, you know... It's the pains and it's the hurts that we experience through life that help to um that help to make us be become to be. You know what I'm saying? Everything can't be sunshines and rainbows. I believe that was uh, that African butterfly that's okay. that degree. And you know, it's traumatic, it's hurtful, this shit can really tear apart your core, you know? 
You're going to lose friends. You're going to lose opportunities. You're going to become somebody different. And there's a fear that comes with that. But you need to allow that to happen because right. you become something more than who you were. And you begin to appreciate love for something more than what you understood it to be at first. You know what I'm saying? So these yeah. things build you. These things build you. Right. You got to break to evolve. Yeah. But that's true. But I don't, I don't really look at it as more so like it wasn't in you. I, I feel like it was already in you, but it was different things that brought it out of you. Like, because, you know, it's like we, we don't the even. Forefront. Huh? It's what made you put it to the forefront. Yeah. Same type, like when you get a cut on your, on your superficial layer, if you just cut the, break your skin on the superficial layer, you, you get the, the, the lymph fluid first. And that's just healing. That's already in you. It didn't just start developing just because you had a cut. No, it was already in you. Now we starting to starting to come to the forefront to do its job. And that's what it, that's what life does with experiences. I feel like ping pong it off what you just said, bro. It definitely that's is real. in us. Life. What we have to do is already in. We just got to get to that point where we have to do it. It's like you know what I'm saying. Same thing with like babies walking. Naturally, our body is structured to be able to walk eventually. Mm. You just gotta, you gotta get to that point where we have to walk now. That's when we make a secondhand knowledge, you know. What time do y'all be starting these joints? Because I chimed in pretty late. It's, oh, mean, seven I mean, o'clock. Seven o'clock. All right. Yeah. You know what I mean? The drop top cruising the streets. You feel me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In a wish. The last. Well, thing, we, we wrap up, man. What's that last thing that you want to put to end up this conversation? Um. Well, first, you know, um, Jetty. I'm sure your mom, she knows that you love her. And to you, Superfly, I know your bro, he he knows that you love him. Like, energy like that, you can't even fake, you know. And that's going to be my last thing on here. Like, a part of knowing yourself is a part of accepting everything that you are, you know. The good with the bad and uh, trusting that. Well, trusting, trusting your own instincts, trusting your own gut, you know, and learning to trust who you are and be sound in the decisions you make for yourself. And be okay with the results that they may lead, good or bad. So mm -hmm. walk out on faith, walk out on love. We'll see y'all Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern. You know, this has been Positive Vibes, maybe the talk show. I want half of the team. I go by the name Dash. And these are the fellas. Yeah. You know, me and Jetty A track <laughs> guest. The super fly new wings is the, the, the chime in with a little perspective. You feel me? Appreciate y'all, Kings, man. Keep doing what y'all doing because it's definitely – we need more people to just be opening conversations that's not incorporated directly on just violence and shenanigans and celebrity bullshit and politics that don't really politic towards our favor and things of that nature, you know what I'm saying? We really got to have more people really trying to bring unity back with our people, for real, for real, and not just saying, oh, only the black people can chime in and stuff. No, just people that's really about people. And that's what I say about our people, because I know my brothers come in every color. I got brothers in every color. You know what I'm saying? So it just be well, definitely about being with, good, being with good people, trying to be good people to do good things, man. Right on. Yeah. But y'all right. be safe, bro. Appreciate y'all for sure, for sure. Uh, Sunday, 7 p.m. Join us. We're going to be back again with another conversational topic. Jetty A Track, Dash Smith. Dash Smith. Yeah, and I'm and I'm sneaking the kind.